It's lovely to be uh, here with you at the front. I'm sure you realise that your ears have had a rest since uh, Easter Sunday. I haven't been standing at the front till then, but all good things have to come to an end, and that's this morning. Okay, so lovely to see uh, you all, particularly lovely to see Anne back with us after being poorly. I'm so pleased you made it. Psalm 30, uh, I'll get it right in a minute, 93 says this, the Lord reigns, he is robed in majesty, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength, the world is firmly established, it cannot be moved, your throne was established long ago, you are from eternity, and if that doesn't encourage us, I don't know what might, let's pray. Merciful God, we come to meet with you, unworthy as we are, and we just ask that you would help us to rejoice afresh in your love and everything that you do. Sovereign God, we ask that you would draw us to yourself so that our service might be sincere and our commitment true. Living Lord, our faith is sometimes so weak but your blessings are ever new. Accept the worship we offer to you today and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning is from uh, 1 Peter, now we're starting at chapter 1, verse 3. Praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice though now for a while you may have to suffer great grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that so that your faith, greater even than, greater than gold, 
even though it is peri <coughs> will perish, even though it has been refined in the fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible joy. For you are receiving the gold of your faith and the salvation of your souls. Amen. The gospel all wrapped up there and six verses. Um, we're going to be thinking about prayer today, so uh, as we uh, think about that, let's just have a look at this. all of that if you take some of that in we're going to stand again to sing and it's the uh, Sutton Coldfield Baptist Church who are going to uh, play for us uh, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord and after that Brett Ben's going to bring our intercessory prayers let's stand to sing Thank you. 
morning, Beacon Luff. The writer of Hebrews says, Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you for this ministry of prayer you have given to your church. And today we will pray for this world in which we live, the world which Jesus loved. Today we pray for peace. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would pour your peace upon our stricken world, that the power of the Holy Spirit would quench the pride, anger, fear and distrust which sets people against people and causes nations to war with each other. We ask at this time that you would guide politicians of the world in their deliberations and inspire them in their decisions that the foundations of a just and a lasting peace may be laid. We pray for peace in countries at war with one another, remembering especially Ukraine and Russia. We ask that you break down the barriers of fear and mistrust that divide nations and individuals. We pray for peace in communities where there is conflict, remembering parts of our land and other places. We ask that you calm the troubled minds of people in our land and in other places. We pray for peace in the workplace, that strikes may be resolved and peace restored. We pray now for the church worldwide. We pray for peace within your church, between denominations, churches and individuals. And we ask that you make us all one in mind and heart, that the world may believe. And we pray that every member of the church may be truly and humbly serve you, that the life of Christ may be revealed in us. We pray for peace for those who have no peace, those who are burdened by guilt or regret, those struggling with illness and sorrow, those in troubled relationships who live in conflict with family, friends and neighbours. We pray that we may have peace within ourselves, a peace in our daily life. We ask that pride, intolerance, <coughs> resentment, hurt feelings will no longer break our peace. We ask you to enable us to be less worried about ourselves and our own way and that your peace would reign in our hearts. That you make us channels of your peace where love, pardon, hope and light would flow. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We ask that you would give us the energy and the will to tear down the walls that divide us from one another and from you. And we thank you that through the death and resurrection of Christ, we can have peace with God, with one another, and peace within ourselves. Amen. Amen. Every Sunday we come here to worship and uh, for me there's three elements to that. There's the words, broadly speaking, that's uh, the readings that we have, our prayers, the things that we listen to that other people say and the things that we say ourselves. And then there's the music, it's different every week and we listen to that. And then there's the images that we that we see. And different people that lead our services blend those elements in different ways, but then that becomes our worship service together. And I think <clears throat> we need a mixture of things because we learn and we all learn in different ways. So this worship time is different to everything else during the week because it isn't our time. I know we come and we say it's our worship, but actually it's God's time. And we are just privileged to be able to share that uh, with him. 
during the week we might uh, read a book or we might watch a film or listen to a, a piece of music or we might create something on the computer and that's for our pleasure we do that because we want to but worship is for God's pleasure and sometimes I forget that and uh, really the, this morning is all about me trying to refocus rejig rethink and hopefully you'll get something from it as well so I wanted to kind of refocus my mind and hopefully yours because sometimes if we watch a film or we read a book sometimes we get a lump in our throat or we get a tear in our eye if it kind of moves us and yet sometimes I feel I can come to church and I can be worshipping in the presence of Almighty God and yet somehow I can go home unaffected and it kind of made me think well, that's that's not right because it's not God's fault it's our fault it's my fault if I can't worship him because he hasn't moved away it's me we're not just missing out personally I think um, we're disappointing God because uh, he wants to be the center of everything that we do and so I was drawn to the basic language of faith really used in the passage that Maureen read that shapes us as Christians and uh, gives us hope. The passage that Maureen read said it talks about praising God the Father and Jesus Christ for their great mercy and the new life that we have through Jesus' birth, his life, his death and his resurrection. And that's the very basis, isn't it, of our Christian salvation faith. And it, it tells us that we have a, an inheritance that won't ever change. And it also reminded us that we have God's shielding power around it. It's all great truth. And we can rejoice in that. And I hope we have rejoiced in some of the words that we've been thinking about already. But verse 6 timely reminds us that we can temporarily suffer trials and difficulties and we've all been there and we've all done that I know sometimes those difficulties are personal but sometimes we stand on the sidelines watching loved ones uh, go through tough times I'm not sure which is more difficult whether it's more difficult to actually suffer yourself or watch somebody else but armed with the power and the truth of those first few verses we can get through and we do get through. It's happened time and time again, hasn't it, over the years, in our own physical families, but also in our church family here, that drastic situations force us to turn our eyes upon Jesus and place us um, at God's mercy, really. And of course, sometimes our loving God, that we trust so much, issues really hard answers that we struggle with. And we've all been there, I know. There's a few things recently that have brought me up a bit abruptly. No more than uh, Peter Kerridge's situation. We pray faithfully, I know we do, for our world. Ben's prayed this morning for uh, all its troubles. We pray for our world leaders. We pray for our country. We pray for our town. We pray for our church. And we pray for ourselves and each other. We've prayed for many loyal, faithful, dear servants in this church over many years. But recently my prayer life, as I say, was kind of maybe yours as well, brought into sharp focus when we were asked to pray for Peter, who's uh, quite unwell at the minute. We were all a bit shell-shocked, well I was anyway, because we know Peter personally, he grew up in this church, his family have served God here and elsewhere so faithfully for many years and still do. And so naturally we hold the family and Peter dear to us. Peter is a high profile uh, Christian man, his job as CEO of Premier Christian Radio means that there's a lot of people that are in his life that are uh, praying for him. So when we were asked to pray, I knew that we weren't uh, the only people uh, responding to that request. 
Uh, my response is that uh, <clears throat> every time I sit down, I pray for Peter. And then somebody pointed out to me, yes, but you don't sit down very much, do you? But I, nevertheless, I do pray. And it made me kind of review the whole of my personal prayer life, if you like. Uh, and it, uh, it re I made it, you know, I realized that it wasn't what it should be. So I thought, back to basics, that's what we do, don't we? Yes, I pray every day, like you do. And yes, I give thanks, as well as coming with my uh, asking before God. But I ask myself the question, am I focused on God without distraction? And the answer to that is probably no. I sit down with all good intentions, maybe you do the same, and, and, and for a while, yes, and then something gets in our mind and we're distracted. I've got a, an encyclopedia of Christian quotes, and when I looked through it, uh, it's, you know, it's all sorts of topics. There are 33 pages on the topic of prayer, uh, much more than any other topic. Um, I'd just like to read you a couple. Uh, Adam Clark says, prayer requires more of the heart than of the tongue. And Corrie Ten Boom said, don't pray, when, pray when you feel like it. Have an appointment with God and keep it. William Temple remarked, when I stop praying, the coincidences stop happening. Martin Lloyd-Jones, prayer in many ways is the expression of our faith in God, and it is. And lastly, Oswald Chambers says, we have to pray with our eyes on God, not on the difficulties. And that's sometimes hard when we're sort of in amongst it all and we're going through it. Examples of prayer are littered all the way through the Bible. And of course, uh, kind of, if Jesus felt it was necessary to pray, then it's pretty vital for us, I would say. So that's the uh, short introduction taken care of. Um, I only have eight points, so we'll not be here very long. <clears throat> I've got a few P's for us to think about. Not the little green things, uh, and I hope it's not going to be mushy, but um, <laughs> all these things are to do with prayer, but they are they have P. First of all, prayer is a privilege. The fact that we can approach Almighty God, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, so accessibly. It's, we're in privileged territory here, and it's a bit of a pinch me moment, if I'm honest. We read uh, Psalm 93 before, and it said, The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. A royal priesthood, yet as privileged sinners, we can approach him with confidence, and we do. Prayer pleases God. We read in the Bible that it pleases God when one sinner repents, but not only that, he's pleased when uh, we take time to approach him and to communicate with him. We're encouraged, aren't we, to uh, come to God when we're troubled and weighed down because he always has time for us. He's pleased to see us on our knees. We are happy to please people, I am, why not God? There's a lot of, there's an alliteration of peace here because prayer parachutes us into God's presence. I've never jumped out of a plane, I don't know what it's like, maybe somebody can tell me later on, but where else can we commune with a king simply by maybe closing our eyes or opening our mouths and hearts. It's easier than getting an appointment at the GPs, isn't it? Prayer is also a, a promising distraction. Whatever is bothering us, prayer takes our minds from the mortal to the eternal. And that's got to be a good thing. As we were reminded, we need our eyes to be on God, not on the problems. Prayer is also a productive pastime because I don't think, well, I'll speak personally, I never come away from being with God feeling worse off than I did before. 
and I presume you feel the same. Time spent in prayer produces a, deep, a deeper faith in trust in God. He's our Father and his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is our Saviour. And I think also it produces a prioritising that perhaps we need to sometimes sit down and, and just quietly think about. Prayer protects us. When we feel battered and bruised by this world, our defence is in the presence of God, who lovingly wraps his arms around us and says, these are mine. They belong to me. What a protection that is. Prayer also preserves us because we do get to points of weakness when we've got nothing left to give. And prayer is that assurance that we can go on because God has everything sorted out. He's the Alpha and the Omega. And the last of the eight points, prayer purifies us from all that worldly stuff that clutters up our lives and clings to us and sometimes drags us down. It even sometimes steers us off path. All that can be rectified and put right through the purifying process of prayer. You know, we sometimes think, I sometimes think God's silent. I sometimes think he's been a bit quiet here. Perhaps he's not listening. Perhaps he's not going to answer. Even maybe we'll get to the pitch where we sort of feel he's maybe abandoned us. We're in good company because Jesus asked the same question on the cross. Why have I been forsaken, Father? But James reminds us that uh, when a righteous person prays, and we're righteous only through Jesus, that prayer carries great power. We're encouraged from God's word to pray without ceasing. And I'm sure most of us bear witness to the fact that it's prayer <coughs> that gets us through this roller coaster that we call life. Those of you who know me uh, know that I like to uh, think in pictures. I'd like to leave this image with you today. A daughter asked her father, asked her minister to pray with her father because her father was dying. So the minister arrived uh, to find the old man propped up in bed uh, with an empty chair beside him. I see you were expecting me, the minister said. Oh yes, the chair, replied the man. And then he went on to say, I've never told anybody this before, not even my daughter, but all my life I found it difficult to pray. At church the pastor would talk about prayer, but it all went over my head. And then about four years ago, my good friend said, Johnny, praying is simply talking to Jesus. Try this. Sit in a chair and pull up another chair beside you and in faith believe Jesus is sitting in it. And just talk to Jesus just like you'd talk to me. The minister was touched by this. They prayed together and then the minister left. Two days later, the daughter came to the minister to tell her that her dad had died that afternoon. Did he die peacefully? The minister asked. And she said, yes, although I wasn't there. But when I came home, there was something a bit strange. Just before he died, my dad must have leaned over and rested his head on that empty chair beside his bed. I don't know why. We pray, as we reminded ourselves at the start, because the Lord reigns. He has got it all sorted. And so it is well with our souls. And that's our closing hymn. When peace like a river, uh, it is well with my soul because of the peace of prayer. It's time to say.
top of the reading that uh, Maureen read said praise to God for a living hope that's what we have I know I'm not sitting down but I do want to pray for Peter Lord I just pray that you would be with him as he's building up his strength ready for his next treatment we pray that you'll keep him infection free we pray that you would just be with him and Karen and the boys and the rest of the family as we just trust Peter into your care. Mm. We do ask that you would be really close to them all at this time. And Lord, we ask that you would send us on our way, conscious not just of our dependence on you, but also of your faithfulness to us. May the experience of your love and the reality of your grace and the knowledge of your constant presence be with us today and evermore for your glory and our blessing. Amen. Amen. Amen.